1027 Business with Michael Avery. Welcome to the Sustainability Slot on Hot. And uh, one of the best performing categories since the beginning of last year has been, no surprises here, commodities. Everything from oil to wheat to palladium to gold is up due in large part to inflation worries and our war in Eastern Europe. But how much room is there left to run? And what will and should mining companies be doing with the windfall that they are generating now? Well, Adrian Singh is uh, the CEO and founder of of gold ore and the inventor of the Mach reactor. Adrian, good to have you back on the show. Just remind us how long you've been in the commodities game and whether you've seen a period like this before in your lifetime. Hello, Michael, and thank you for that introduction and greetings as well to your listeners. I have been in the commodities game since 1989 when the gold price was around 400 US dollar per ounce mark. And I remember the slump in about the year 2000 when the gold price fell to around 200 US dollar per ounce, which resulted in the closure of many marginal operations. Uh, Well, since then, the gold price has been steadily increasing and not too long ago was flirting with the 2000 US dollar um, per ounce mark. So I've been quite privileged, I think, in my lifetime to have seen a tenfold increase in the gold price. Um, which, yeah, I don't know how many people can say. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I recall the 2000s. Uh, that was when we we saw uh, the UK Chancellor of the Exchequer, Gordon Brown, selling out uh, a large chunk of uh, the UK's gold reserves right at the bottom of the cycle. Mm-hmm. Probably one of the worst moves, uh, probably very similar to what we saw with selling our strategic oil reserves at uh, just over $20 uh, a, a barrel. Now, th- they say that the cure for high prices is high prices. How sustainable do you reckon this period of high gold prices is? So I think the the rising inflation coupled with the uncertainty with the situation in Eastern Europe will see many investors looking towards a safe haven of gold. So I think that there will be an increasing demand for gold as a commodity. And coupled with that, we have the sanctions against Russia and the shunning away from products emanating from Russia. And when we consider that a fair amount of the world's gold production comes from Russia and then, you know, the shortage of supply is bound to fan gold prices to new highs. Also, uh, Russia is the world's largest producer of palladium. And so there will be some strain on the supply side of palladium to the markets, which is also likely to result in an increase in the palladium price and the overall PGM basket price which creates opportunity then for PGM producers around the world and in South Africa as well. It's a fantastic opportunity, and we may just be the lucky country. It always used to go that mantle to Australia, and uh, it does look like a lot of the stars are aligning. What are some of your international clients doing now, considering this, with the extra cash that they're generating, obviously apart from returning it to shareholders? Surely now is the time to be thinking about reinvesting some of that capex back into operations, just to make you more efficient and more sustainable into the future. Well, absolutely, Michael. The time has never been better for mining houses to reinvest back into their operations, both to improve recoveries and also to ensure that they are future ready. Improving on metal extraction efficiencies while commodity prices are high is a no-brainer, as even the smallest percentage point increase in recovery translates into attractive incremental revenue increases. And while there is capital available from improved profits, I suppose the question is more, why not? Mm. You know, many of my international clients have committed already to the target of net zero carbon emissions by the year 2050. Some have set their targets even closer at 2040 and even 2030. Uh, so apart from the obvious, uh, you know, ways of reducing uh, carbon emissions like electrifying mining vehicles and machinery and reducing the reliance on fossil fuels for power generation at mine sites, companies are also looking at recycling raw materials and reducing and containing their waste discharge um, into the environment. So improving the efficiency of uh, the operation of equipment and reducing uh, maintenance requirements is also a big focus. So lots of areas, uh, if, if you're a mining company that's cash flush, to be looking to invest back into your business, it feeds into the, the big ESG narrative uh, that uh, certainly isn't going anywhere. Uh, and, and in terms of social license, 
is just the right thing to do to ensure that uh, your environmental impact and footprint is as minimal as possible. And we need mining companies. That, oh, boy, do we need mining companies. I think so many ESG people um, just think we can do, do away with the mining industry overnight. It is vitally important to the economy, but important that it's done in a sustainable and efficient manner. So with that said, I mean, that's really playing into your strengths. What sort of demand are you seeing for your Mach reactor technology? And just remind us what the applications are for the Mach reactor. I must say, Michael, the, the demand for the Mach reactor technology has increased substantially over the last year. I would like to think that this is because of the improved marketing strategy and brand awareness, but it's also obviously been helped along by the many mining projects that have come out of hibernation as the world prepares itself for life after the pandemic. Um, now, in terms of um, the application, so the Mach reactor is currently utilized for recovery enhancement in both the gold and uh, PGM sectors of mining by improving the efficiencies of both leaching and flotation processes within those operations. And uh, although the application also extends to base metal extraction and it also industrial mineral recovery enhancement as well. Um, the Mach reactor also finds application in the environmental remediation sphere, uh, specifically with regards to cyanide destruction and arsenic remediation, as well as uh, water treatment industries. So, and that all helps towards creating a, a cleaner future as well. Absolutely. Uh, I was going to ask you how gold ore actually helps when it comes to the the sustainability line when we talk about ESG uh, and the S here with a capital S. How does gold ore actually help companies to improve their sustainability? Well, I'd like to uh, yeah, perhaps talk about this in terms of the three P's of of business being people, profits, and planets, and maybe planet should come first there. <laughs> but anyway, I think for leaders to provide their people first and foremost with the best technology to achieve their goals is key to boosting employee morale, attracting the best talent, and as well as reducing uh, staff turnover. Um, and you know, and that's an important factor for business. Is a lot of for a lot of uh, businesses, uh, their businesses, their people. So um, you know, you've got to look at how to keep your your staff happy and motivated. Um, and then on the profit side of things, it goes without saying that the Mach reactor will boost profit through improved recoveries and efficiency of of metal extraction. So so that's a given, and that's probably. The main reason why a lot of people will, will look at a Mach reactor is to improve recoveries and improve their profit. Um, but then on the other side, you know, on the planet topic, um, the environmental remediation applications of the Mach um, contribute to protecting our planet. So the Mach has the ability to turn around loss-making operations through this improvement in in recovery and improve the life of mine by improving the viability of certain ore sources that would otherwise not be feasible for a lot of operations. And in so doing, uh, does that help to reduce the carbon footprint? Um, well, yes, I would like to think so. And I would like to challenge mining houses with a couple uh, a couple of my own zero targets to add to zero emissions, and, and those being the ones of zero maintenance and zero losses. Mm. Um, and maybe that's more ambition than targets, but it's worthwhile chasing. So the Mach differentiates itself not only in being technically superior, but also requiring zero maintenance throughout its 10-year-plus lifespan, which a lot of my clients and potential clients find hard to believe. Well, a lot of potential clients find that hard to believe until they start uh, visiting, uh, you know, people who are using the Mach and see that this is true. So companies can not only improve recovery with the Mach to improve profitability, but also save on maintenance costs, which reduces their operating cost and, you know, has the overall uh, knock-on effect of energy savings. Yeah. And um, and then how about being uh, not being so complacent with our natural resources and targeting zero losses of valuables to tailings facilities? If you could imagine a world where extraction losses have been reduced to close to zero, where reworking and remining of tailings dams are not necessary, 
how about leaving our grandchildren a legacy of beautiful of a beautiful world instead of giving them the responsibility of cleaning up behind us so um, I think zero carbon emissions is, is no more a matter of corporate social responsibility. It is now a matter of survival for many businesses. Well, thanks, Adrian. Uh, it certainly seems like a no-brainer for gold miners who are printing cash to be investing in this sort of tech while uh, the sun is shining on the industry just to make sure that they are future fit. So that was Adrian Singh, the CEO and founder of Gold Ore and the inventor of the Mach Reactor. Hot 1027 Business with Michael Avery.